What's up, people? Supreme Decisions here, and as you can see, not in the studio. No particular reason other than the fact I'm tired of being in there every day. So I uh, had to get a little bit of fresh air. And plus, doing a little bit of road work, as you call it. But anyway, today I want to talk to you about a, another qualifier because, again, most of the stuff we're going to be talking about is going to lead up to the series Weaponizing Your Defense. But the defense actually is going to be geared towards federal court. Now, understanding, I talked about removals to federal court from state court. I've even talked about the, the constitutional standpoints or outlooks of standing in Allen v. Wright. Well, today I'm going to go a little bit deeper because standing in federal court because at the federal level, legal actions cannot be brought simply on the grounds that an individual or group is displeased with the government action or law. So these are things where it has to have something dealing directly with federal law. Federal courts only have constitutional authority to resolve actual disputes. That was pretty much the exact same language that was used in Allen v. Wright to establish standing. Now, today's case is Lawan v. Defenders of Wildlife, 504 U.S. 555, and it's a 1992 case. Because the Supreme Court created a three-part test to determine whether a party has standing to sue. Because understanding, when you see the context of plaintiff and defendant, those are civil civil language when it comes to law. So it means suit or it deals with suit. I'll get into that again later because as you see, most of the stuff that I speak of, while it sounds outlandish, I then show you something later, you know, sometimes a year later, where you actually see it come to fruition and you're like, oh wow, this dude really actually understands this. But one, the plaintiff must have suffered an injury in fact, meaning that the injury is of a legally protected interest, which is concrete and particularized and actual or imminent. These are the things where you're saying that a third party, someone that has nothing to do with the subject or the issue, they are the only ones that can bring the suit. Remember, no third party claims. Second, there must be a casual connection between the injury and the conduct brought before the court. Now, when you're seeing this, you have to understand federal courts only have constitutional authority to resolve actual disputes. So when we're talking about this, we're talking or speaking directly about constitutional issues. And when you're looking at your, I've given you a couple of, um, what do you call those? <laughs> Federal causes of actions. One, dealing with civil rights issues. But also, I'm going to start giving you another one because it comes with this thing called federal questions. Now, I'm gonna say something later because a lot of you are not gonna like it because it is speaking about jurisdictional questions. But as we go, we're gonna grow. Now we're gonna talk about number three. It must be likely rather, rather than speculative that a favorable decision by the court will redress the injury. Now, we all understand constitutional violations. I get it, it is what it is. But you must understand it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. You have to have proof that the violation exists. Or, you got to get my master class to find out the or. Anyway, understand three steps to standing in federal court. Because the federal court only has constitutional authority to resolve actual disputes. 
Keep that in mind on standing. Lawan be defenders of wildlife. And Supreme, you know it. Out.